Hi there from Northern Alberta, Canada. I am Christy and welcome. In today's video, I am showing you what I've been doing with my corn, going over some corn varieties that I've grown here on our little hobby farm and um, showing you some results from my melons. I just pulled this little last watermelon off and I'm gonna crack it open. It's soft, so I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like inside. Looks like breakfast to me, yum. I'm gonna enjoy this while I get the rest of my stuff packed up to go to the florist today. Ooh. <laughs> it's good. Really good. So sweet. Wow, it's sweet. Not watering it makes it really sweet. Ooh. get to work instead of snacking. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I grew watermelons in hanging baskets this year. The watermelon I just cut, this is the variety called Blacktail Mountain. I have grown this before last year. I grew it. Uh, the hail took out the melons, so we didn't actually get to eat any. But the previous year, we had a massive harvest of these that were grown in um, coconut fiber baskets. The one I just cut open here is a sugar baby. Now, the sugar baby, this is the first year I've ever grown it, and I was really excited to see how well they did in hanging baskets. This one I just cut open was also a Blacktail Mountain, and you can see there's a very significant difference. The Blacktail Mountain has a lot of rind, and the Sugar Baby has a very small rind. And um, honestly, I definitely preferred the Sugar Baby. It was very, very flavorful. It had a great texture. Um, both had a good texture, but it was just much sweeter and definitely tastier. Um, my mom and myself both liked the sugar baby more. My son Chaz liked the Blacktail Mountain one better. And this is a Halona melon, which I also grew in a hanging basket. You've been seeing this in some of my garden tours videos throughout the year. And I've been anticipating. I actually went into the greenhouse and I couldn't find it. It wasn't in the hanging basket anymore. And I was so frustrated with my husband because I thought he picked it and ate it because um, I couldn't find it on the ground but I did eventually find it in the dahlias and it had kind of fell and rolled and got tucked underneath one of these really big plants that I had under the the basket itself so luckily I found it I found it with my nose because let me tell you when these are ripe they are ripe and you can smell them from a very long ways away um, and uh, they are pretty intense flavor. Can you try it? Chaz did a taste test. He really enjoyed it. It's good. My mom also gave it a taste test, and this yeah, was really actually the first like time tentacle. any of us had actually tasted a melon that was actually vine ripened. It's got a really nice taste. There's a very significant difference between vine ripened and pick green, which we normally get in our stores up here. It was a big harvest day for us. Um, actually, all week we've had been having frost, so I did pull my leeks, and I decided for my leeks, the way I wanted to preserve them was I wanted them freeze-dried. I did actually put some in the freezer, but I freeze-dried them, and they turned out really great. Very happy with it. It's been several harvests this week going to the florist since we've been freezing. It's been nice also having Tyson home a little bit more. He's been enjoying some time with us as a family, even in all the chaos of harvest season and canning season. Um, we always make time to have share some time together, and it's been really nice. Lots of harvesting happening. Um, We've been having really cold nights, and so I've been taking buckets and buckets of status. 
Lately, our life around here has been harvest, preserve, take a cat nap, repeat. One of the great things that happened is timing worked out perfectly for the for the succession of sunflowers I planted inside of my greenhouse. The sunflowers just started blooming the, at the same time that we had some uh, negative two and negative three degrees Celsius mornings. So the sunflowers outside are not producing any new buds because um, well they didn't they didn't get taken out by the cool temperatures, but they're not producing new buds. So I've been harvesting inside, and uh, one of the things that I did notice is the yarrow is doing great. And same with the Bells of Ireland. My Bells of Ireland had completely died back and I've been able to harvest more of those. And I just, I'm loving these beautiful colors. Um, I've, I've even been able to harvest some zinnias and uh, it's just been taking loads of stuff to the florist, trying to get as much to her as I can from the garden before it's all froze and done. Um, again, we live in Northern Alberta, so... Our season is very short and I want to be able to give her as much as I can from the garden before it's all gone and luckily some of these stems can last a very long time in a cooler so um, it's it's such it's such a wonderful season it's bittersweet I'm really loving this status it's like this blue status that I got from Johnny seeds it just pops especially with the browns and yellows it looks so good and then um, this is the Chinese forget-me-not it went to seed which is kind of some interest artiplex there's some butterfly weed down in there that that stuff smells like coffee it smells so good it has a sap though when you cut it so you have to be careful not to get a rash it's corn harvesting day and I wanted to just document how much I got of what variety I planted three varieties um, the first one here this little strip right here that is um called my fair lady corn um the second this second heap right here in the middle this one is called bodacious this is the second year i grew bodacious and then under these carrots right here this is a variety oh forgot a carrot <laughs> That third variety down there is called Allure. Now, here's the thing. I planted the same amount of seeds for all of them. I started out with 72 trays, 72 cell trays for every corn. Um, Allure corn had trouble with germination. Um, it was very, very spotty germination. They were just, they didn't want to grow this year. I've been harvesting a lot of the corn um, and eating a lot of the corn of the uh, the bodacious and the my fair lady the my fair lady seeds i ordered from Vessie seeds here in canada it is a shorter variety of corn um it is a single stock plant that grows about five foot tall delicate ears are seven to eight inches filled with tender sweet by kernel corn um it is a low input cultivation with high quality is how they advertise it the my fair lady it is um a 75 to 80 day it's a sugar enhanced corn now this variety here i'm no stranger to this is bodacious now bodacious is also a sugar enhanced hybrid um, variety it is an 80 to 90 day maturity i grew this last year and had tremendous success it was my favorite corn last year, especially for freezing. This corn is no joke, the best corn that I found for texture for freezing. This is my first year growing my fair lady corn, so I cannot tell you how this will preserve up, but it um, it seems to be holding up really well so far. The bodacious corn is definitely a contender to consider last year though it had a much better flavor than this year so i don't know what happened 
um, the Bodacious was ready at the same time as the My Fair Lady, and the My Fair Lady definitely is smaller. Um, so I would say that the Bodacious probably outperformed the My Fair Lady, in all fairness. Now what completely shocked me, this is another bicolor corn, um, the Allure corn from last year. Now it, they, the Allure was very, very com um, com comparable to the Bodacious, and that's why I grew it. I wanted a variety of yellow corn and bicolor corn. Um, because I had such good success with it last year and had great germination and great production. It was a little bit later and I anticipated that, but this year I got very minimal um, actual fully developed ears of corn. In fact, a lot of them are really small. You know, they didn't get to their full size um, and I did harvest some of these a little bit too soon. We just ran out of season. Um, we, we are having every night has been zero degrees celsius so i have to harvest this so i can at least like put up baby corn in the freezer but um yeah i was very surprised at the results this year it just wasn't a good year for the yellow for some reason now i don't know if it was pest pressure um i don't know what it was that caused such a bad year for this variety when the previous year i had great success so maybe it's disease i'm not sure um so the ease of harvest, I would say my least favorite to harvest is probably the bodacious. Um, this corn is really tough. It has these long, like I ripped all of them off, but it has these long pieces um, on the bottom part that like they're really hard to get off. And if you're like harvesting a lot, your arm does get tired. Um, breaking these off because it just they're not as easy to get off as some of the other ones to harvest I think that the allure corn is probably the easiest corn to harvest I remember last year it was quite easy to just pull them off the other thing too is that the allure corn is quite flimsy it doesn't have a very strong plant um, so that's probably why it has an ease of harvest Alert is a 75-day hybrid corn. This corn was developed to have a good germination in cooler soils, which was the attraction to me about this last year and why I grew it. And I did have really good success. Our soil was much warmer this season, so maybe that has to do with our um, crop failure. But last year, I can tell you it was a bumper crop this year. It just wasn't its year. I've been harvesting these two varieties a lot and eating a lot of corn um, and giving a ton away. And look at it, just they just outperformed. So I am impressed with both of these. Um, I wish that the My Fair Lady was a little bit bigger. On average, they're pretty well uniform, those smaller, they're smaller size. And in comparison, I mean, there is really no comparison. So I don't know, I, I, I'll just put in fairness, put them all together. Um, Allure is definitely, this is the, the size it's supposed to be, and it definitely is a bigger corn, so I could see why it would take a lot longer for it to fully mature. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how sweet it is and see what it tastes like. This Allure corn has a really good shelf life um, for market gardeners and it has the texture. The texture is all, like it's everything when it comes to corn, even after harvest and after freezing. And I really did like the Allure last year. Okay, so I decided I was gonna try this corn. I took a big bite out of it. Now I remember why I grew Allure last year. It is so good. It is really, really, really sweet and concentrated very nice tasting corn raw um i don't know what it's tasting like cooked this year but it's pretty good while we had this big corn harvest out front of the house the chickens decided to come investigate and take a drink while they were here you recall these guys they are the ones that we incubated this spring if you watch those videos these were the the male um hatching eggs that i received the of the red blue lace wine dotes from breezy bird farms and look at them they're so beautiful i love the colors um the one the one closest to the house is actually one of, from my own hens but the other three um are a few of the friendly ones that 
we hatched from those mail-in um, eggs. And this first one here, this is a rooster, and I think I might actually keep him as our main man. Those other two are pullets, so we're really, really excited to have these beautiful colors in our flock. The guineas are getting so big. I'm pretty sure Mary, one of our commenters and subscribers, had jinxed us because she asked the question of what would we do if the guineas got into the buffalo pasture next to our yard? And the answer is we wait till the guineas decide they want to come home, which they did finally. Um, but they decided that there was more bugs to chase in the bison pasture and they're getting so big. My mom is here helping me shuck this corn and get it preserved and in the freezer. Um, and I am preserving it in several ways. I'm trying this technique that I had seen um, suggested from many of you guys who are viewers. You suggested cutting off the end pieces and leaving a few of the outer leaves on the cob itself and then just popping it in the freezer. So I'm giving that a try. We have a mess going on. But yeah, I'm just cutting... Um, I don't know if I'm doing this right. This is the first time I'm doing this whole. Um, and I just listened to some of the suggestions, the common suggestions throughout my videos. Um, the past few years, many of you have commented. And so I thought I would give it a go and see. So hopefully this is right. This is really hard to do with one hand. My tripod for um, this, the for doing videos, I left the one that I normally use out here in the boat, which... I just didn't have access to go get that, so sorry about that. The little kittens, if you've been watching um, the orphan kittens, they went to, they got to go outside today and explore, chase some bugs, have some fun. It was a beautiful day and they really enjoyed learning to run around and play. Grass, run, walking in grass is kind of fun for them because it's a little pokey and just not something they're used to. <laughs> They're just having a lot of fun outside. So as uh, most of you can guess, we did not rehome any of them or either of them. And um, after you bottle feed some orphan kittens, it's hard to part with them, even though they can sometimes get into some mischief like right here so the corn i blanched it this is the stuff that we're going to be um removing from the cobs we're going to be just processing these as loose uh, kernels so i like to blanch them first it's easier to work with them and i just do that by putting them into some boiling water just for a few minutes and then I remove it and I put it into cold water to stop the cooking process and then we can work with it and taking the kernels off the corn and then uh, preserving it whichever way we choose to. Once the kernel is off of the cob, what I like to do is something I learned from Rachel on this night, 1870s, 1870s homestead. She makes a corn cob syrup and I uh, made that last year. We used it quite a bit. I like to use it in bread pudding um, as a sweetener. Um, and yeah, that's what I do. I just, yeah, here I'm just cooling off the cobs and then I can work with them and preserve them in several ways. While we were working on the corn, we had some commotion. The baby guineas have not learned how to go around and uh, the bigger ones can fly over the garden fence. But these little guys, um, I had a hard time getting up to them to move them around because they have some very protective parents who will definitely try to rip your face off. They are worse than a goose. Um, if anyone has ever dealt with a Canadian goose, it's probably safer than an angry guinea mama or papa. So um, we did get these guys moved around and safe and all good. My mom was helping me put two cup measures into freezer bags. I used this little gadget tool I got on Amazon to take the kernels off of the cobs. And then I freeze dried and froze some corn in the the corn we froze in two cup measure in the freezer i still have some from last year to use up so i didn't do a lot of 
frozen corn, but I did do a couple trays or three trays of freeze dried corn. This is a real exciting moment for me because I've been patiently waiting for these peppers and I'm so happy that I found one today while I was harvesting some flowers in the greenhouse. Very, very excited. This is the new Ace, I think, or new, new Ace or New Age. I think it's New Ace is what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. Nice size pepper, not bad, but I'm really excited. I gotta show you this. I noticed this past week or two that there was a ton of eggs all over my plants in the greenhouse and outside. And I was starting to freak out a little bit, guys. I was not impressed with what I was seeing. But then I seen these weird things and I thought, oh my gosh, what kind of invasion is this? Turns out it is the pupae of a ladybug. So this is the stage after the larvae. This is what they look like. And they're actually stuck to the plant. They're not really alive. They don't move around. They don't do anything. They're just stuck there. And it, it really concerned me. I didn't know what it was at first. But I am relieved because that means that my ladybugs have reproduced in my greenhouse. And that means I will have some crop protection from some of the pests right up into November. I'm a little... I don't know. I don't know what this is. I did not plant this. Oh, look, there's more ladybugs, more ladybug larvae. But um, I did not plant this and it started growing. I don't know what it is. Does anyone recognize this plant? What is it? I didn't plant it. I've never grown anything like it. I don't know what it is and why it's here. I don't remember planting it, but it's really, really vigorous. Any suggestions, please let me know. I also did an experiment because we've been getting freezing every night. Um, the past, every night, the past like five, six days have been zero degrees Celsius or negative two degrees Celsius. And so what I decided to do is my zinnias were just starting to come into production. So I tried transplanting them, even though they were in full bloom. And as you can see, I had some good luck. Um, these have been planted like this for about a week. And um, I've actually harvested a couple of these now. And yeah, they were budded up. They developed. Um, they're pushing new branching. So I should have these going in here. Um, one did not make it, but I got one, two, three, four, five, six plants in here. I have five out of six that transplanted. So I'm really, really pleased with that, even though they're kind of compacted in there. I will be, uh, I don't expect a lot out of them, but who knows, maybe I will get a lot and keep my floor stocked with zinnia. So every morning um, the past week, we've had some really cool nights and lots of frost and dew on the plants in the morning. Some of them are still pulling through. Surprisingly, I haven't had much die back but um, it, is, it is a season of change and I'm ready to welcome it. I'm ready to shift gears and do some other things um, outside of the garden and off the farm. Um, and uh, even though it's been a fun journey, this season was a long one and a very tiring one and I'm ready to rest and enjoy the memories of the beautiful things we grew this past season. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye for now.